Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 42. In this tutorial we are going to focus on some UI which flashes up on our screen when we need to enter the car and we're also going to fix the minimap so as it still works when we are inside the car. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. If you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the first thing I want to do is fix the minimap. Um, I think we've noticed it a few times before that, yes, it works when we're running around. However, when we get into our car, it does not work. The reason it doesn't work is because it's permanently attached to our character, which we end up turning off when we get into our car. So basically we need to come up with a method which will change our position of the minimap to reflect our car position rather than our player position. So we're going to do that inside the vehicle entry script. So head into that script and we're going to add uh, just one variable, which is going to be that minimap. Um, we will also come back into this script a little later on in this tutorial for the uh, UI to get into the car. But for now, we're just focusing on the minimap. So let's start with public game object minimap cam semicolon. Now, because we already have the vehicle uh, right here, that means that we don't need to actually declare it as another variable. We can use the transform position of the vehicle cam to get the minimap into place. Now, one thing to note about our minimap cam is its position and rotation. Now, these are its local position and rotation settings. So 0, 25, 0 is position. 90, 0, 0 is its rotation. These need to be identical when we transfer it over to the car. So if we just move the object over to the car, those figures would theoretically change because it's in a slightly different position and rotation than what our player would be. So we also need to reset those when we shift it over. So to do all of that, it is just three lines of code. And we've done something effective in the same sort of way before when we've used parent. So what we'll do is we'll say mini map cam dot transform dot parent equals live vehicle dot transform. Next thing we need to do is let's set the rotation to 90, 0 and 0. And we can once again say minimap cam dot transform dot local Euler or Euler angles, depending on how you wish to pronounce it, equals new vector 3. And in brackets, we need to do the uh, coordinate, well, not the coordinates, the actual rotation values, which was 90, 0, 0. So 90, 0, 0. Close bracket, semicolon. And what that will do is it will make it the exact same as it was in our player. So for example, if our player is rotated one way and the car is rotated another, it will just transfer it over and it would look a bit skew if, if we were to just standard transfer um, by a parent. Next thing we need to do is the local position. So minimap cam dot transform dot local position once again equals new vector three and in brackets it was zero, twenty five and zero. Close bracket semicolon and save. And remember that if you had your minimap camera higher or lower, you need to put whatever value is here in the position. So even though I've put 25 and 90, if yours are slightly different, remember you have to put these exact values in this script, otherwise it will not work. So next thing to do is if we head to our car and go to the vehicle entry trigger, we just need to assign the minimap cam to there. We also need to do the inverse of that, so vehicle exit. So let's go to our vehicle exit script. And once again, let's declare the uh, minimap camera as a variable. So public game object minimap cam semicolon. And the great thing is we can actually copy these two lines of code. So we'll place them here 
But before that, we also need to say minimap cam dot transform dot parent equals the player dot transform semicolon and save. Now it is important to use the parent line of code before we set the rotation and the position. The reason for that is because if we set the rotation and position before we move the camera, then that's not going to change anything at all. It will still effectively just move the camera and not correct the rotation or position. So make sure that they are set after we have moved the camera. So next thing to do is let's head back into Unity. Let's click on the exit trigger and then add that variable over there, which once again is the minimap camera, the exact same object. Let's save our project and let's test this out. So essentially all we've really done is we've turned our player off, but after that we've moved the minimap camera out of our player and placed it onto the car. That's top and bottom of all we've done. It's as simple as that to get all of this working. And hopefully, if you keep an eye on the minimap, you should see all of this in action smoothly. There we go. You saw the minimap change its rotation then because our forward facing did change completely. And let's get out of the vehicle. And there we go. The minimap cam has returned to our player. So the next thing we need to do is let's set up a quick little bit of UI which says uh, enter vehicle whenever we are in the vicinity to get in our vehicle, i.e. when we want to press E. So I'm going to do something real quick and simple to do this. You can obviously take a lot more time, but fundamentally the code is going to be the exact same for what we want to do here. So let's go to game object UI and I'm going to go raw image. Let's double click and I want it to be in the center. And I'm also going to reduce the size to about 50 by 50 and see how that looks on my screen. I think that's too big. Basically, all I want to do is create a simplistic looking key that just has E in it, i.e. to get into our vehicle. So maybe 25 by 25. Yep, I think that's about right. And in that raw image, I'm going to right click UI and let's have text. That text is going to be completely black and it's just going to be the letter E. And let's make sure we can actually see what we're doing here. And let's set this as, um, we can't actually see it, can we, because of the position of it. So here's a cool little trick. Let's drag the text out of there and let's reposition this to cover the exact position. There we are. And now drag the text back onto raw image and we should see it. Now we just need to center it, make it however big you want to make it. So let's say 20. So it will appear on screen like that. And let's rename that raw image to E key. And I think below it, what I want to do is have some more text that says enter vehicle. So I'm going to take uh, that text and rename it and put key UI, duplicate it and have this as um, interact text. So later on in the game, when we've got other things to interact with, with the E key, we'll be able to use this and modify it. So I'm going to set this text as white and I'm also going to move it down below the E key and stretch it to roughly about there. And I'm gonna have this just simply say, enter vehicle and have it to the left. So basically when we're near the vehicle, this will flash up on screen. So all that's in position. So let's turn that E key object off up here. And let's head back into our scripts, which is vehicle entry. So we now need to declare that as a variable. So public game object, and we'll call it uh, something simple, interact UI, semicolon. Now we can go one step further with this if we want to, because um, we do need to occasionally change the text that will display there. We're not gonna worry about it too much for now, 
But when we do get other items in the game, which will um, change that text, for example, if we, I don't know, something random, let go to a vending machine and the text should say use vending machine. Obviously, we're going to have to change that both in that script that we end up creating and this script. Um, I'm just thinking, should we, do you know what? I think we really should. I, I think we should kind of future proof what we're doing here. So let's add the namespace using unity engine.ui semicolon. And what we'll do here is add an extra variable. So public game object interact text semicolon. And what this means is that when we enter this collider, I want interact text to say enter vehicle. So down here in our first um, void on trigger enter section, this method, we're going to say uh, interact text dot get component spiky brackets text of close bracket dot text equals what we want the interacting text to say, i.e. enter vehicle. And then it's probably a good idea to actually remove what that text says there. So that text is now blank. If we were to turn this object on, we wouldn't see anything. So we're going to see this script actually make that change for us. So at the same time, we also need to turn on the whole object of Interact UI. So next, Interact, I can't speak, Interact UI dot set active true, semicolon. It also means that on trigger exit, we have to do the exact same opposite. So copy, place it in the void on trigger exit, and we'll set the text as blank, and we'll also set the UI as off. So false. Save that script and head back into Unity. And when it's compiled, let's go to our vehicle and vehicle entry trigger. And let's set those two UI variables. So the first one is the interact UI, which is the E key. And the second one is the interact text. So let's save our scene, press play, and let's go and check this out. So essentially all that's happening is when we are in the vicinity of our car, i.e. in that trigger section, it turns our UI on. And when we leave that section, it turns the UI off. Let's go and make sure all of this works. And in, there we go. So enter vehicle. So next thing we need to do is turn off that text. So when we enter the vehicle, we also need to turn it off because if you think about it logically, we never ever trigger this section here because theoretically we never leave that um collider itself. So let's copy those two lines of code and place them after we've moved that minimap camera. Resave. Let it compile in Unity. Press play and let's check this out. So it can be as simple as that to bring UI elements together. And obviously you should take your time to build some of this stuff. If you want to go as simple as I have with this, then obviously that, that's entirely up to you. As I always say, this is your game. You take the time to refine everything I show you. Your game shouldn't be looking as terrible as mine does right now. Yours should be looking a lot better. Uh, let's actually come out, there we go. So we can see there that we exited that area and it disappeared off our screen back on so let's get in the vehicle and off it goes awesome so next tutorial what we're going to do is we are going to add uh, some more to our hints so for example when we get into the car we want a hint to come up to say uh, w to go forward s to reverse something like that and i think we need to add an extra location uh, for Summertown where we need to drive to. So we'll probably add more blocks to the game. And there are a couple of typos that I discovered. Uh, I say typos, little mistakes we made in some UI text in the original scene and in this scene. So we'll fix them up in the next tutorial as well. So until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.